Hello, in this video, you're going to learn about something called an array. Now, before I explain what it is, I'm going to pose a problem to you just to illustrate why we need arrays. Let's say that you have a class called deck, which represents a deck of playing cards. Inside this class, you want to put the data representing the cards. Let's say that each card is represented by a string like this. And in case you didn't know, there are 52 cards in a deck of playing cards. So if you were to keep track of those 52 strings, you might start declaring variables like this. Well, that's going to get out of hand pretty quickly. And here's an even bigger problem. What if you had to keep track of thousands of employees in an employee database? You can't just create a variable or constant to keep track of each employee. Swift has some classes that can be used to handle large collections of data. An array is one of these collection type classes. Let's see how we can use an array with our playing cards example. Rather than declaring a separate variable for each piece of data, you can simply declare a single variable to keep track of a single array. An array has slots where you can store data. Each slot is almost like a mini variable that keeps track of a piece of data. Each slot is also given an index number starting from zero. To retrieve the data, you simply ask the array to return the data at a specific index. To keep track of the data, you can ask the array to use a specific index to keep track of that piece of data. Just like a variable, if an array index is already pointing to a piece of data and you assign another piece of data to that index, it's going to track your new piece of data, but stop tracking the old one. All right, now that you have the basic gist of what an array is, let's go into the Xcode playground and see how the Swift syntax looks. So here we've got a brand new playground and we're going to take a look at how to use arrays. First of all, let's take a look at how they're declared. Let's create a new variable called A and we're going to assign it an array. You start with two angle brackets or square brackets and this represents an array. Inside, we're going to put the elements that we want to start off our array with separated by commas. So let's just use strings as a simple example. I'm going to put uh, let's just put some animals in here. So we've got a bird, comma, that separates the elements. Remember, uh, we've got, let's say, turtle, and we've got cat. So we've got three elements inside our array here. Remember, this is one slot, this is one slot, and this is one slot. So we've got three different slots in this array. Arrays are also zero based. So that means that the indexes start at zero. And bird is at index zero, turtle is at index one, and cat is at index two. Even though if you ask for the amount of items in the array, you're going to get three. So that's really important to understand. So now that we have our array, let's take a look at how we access the elements inside the array. Well, you simply use the reference to your array. In our case, that's the variable A. And then you put the square brackets beside it and you specify the index for the element that you want. Remember, in an array, order matters. So you start by the reference to your array, which for us right here, that's the variable A. And then you put the square brackets beside it, and inside the square brackets, you specify the index for the element that you want. So let's say you wanted to return the first element in your array. Would you put one? No, because remember, I told you arrays were zero based, right? So you start with zero. So let's print this out and let's see what we get. So we get bird down here in the console that's at index zero. And as you would expect at index two, we would get cat. Now what happens if you try to specify index three because we don't have a fourth element? Well, you're gonna get a very common error. Get used to seeing this because um, even the most experienced programmers will encounter this error a ton. Index out of range. This is an app crash. Your app will actually completely shut down when you try to access an element that doesn't exist in the array. It's out of range. It's out of bounds. And typically in a production app, you're going to have some sort of error handling. Uh, so you might not get a crash, but if you didn't have any sort of error handling, then your app would actually stop functioning right here. So this is how you access elements by accessing them like this. Now, how about adding elements into the array? Well, let's take a look at that. 
first of all, you reference your array and then you can actually do it one of several different ways. You can use the append method and then you can just literally attach an element at the end. So when you append dog, it just adds it as the next slot. So now your array actually has a fourth element and I can print a at index three. Um, actually, sorry, this is still crashing. Let me just, let me just change this to two. So we're not getting the crash, but you can see here, this gets uh, this element and then we append dog to it. And then we try to print out the uh, fourth slot and we get dog as expected. Now, a different way to append something, which is especially useful for when you have multiple elements to add to the end, you can use the plus equal operator. And then you specify another array for you to append. So let's say I wanted to add, um, what's another animal that we can do? Let's say, uh, not really being creative right here. Um, snake. Elephant. Man, that took me a long time to think of it. <laughs> so when you do that, it basically puts snake behind dog and elephant behind snake. So now uh, if we, let's show you how to print out how many elements are in that array. A dot count, the number of elements in the array. So let's print this out and you'll see that we have six, right? That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So using the count property, you can get the amount of items inside your array. But remember, even though there are six items in your array, the last element is at index five. All right, so zero based. I keep reminding you about that because that's a very common mistake. All right, we're not done with adding elements because I also need to show you how to insert elements. So what if you wanted to add an element to the front of the list or in the middle of the list? Well, there's a method for that. A dot insert. So you can specify the element that you wanna add and where you wanna add it to. So let's say we wanted to add another animal like giraffe and I wanted to put it at the very front, then I would specify zero because that's the first slot. And that actually pushes everything out, right? It, it doesn't replace what is at index zero, it inserts itself, right? So if I insert giraffe at zero and I print the count now, we have seven. So it's gonna be giraffe, bird, turtle, cat, dog, snake, and elephant. And that's the ordering because in an array, the order matters. All right, I also wanna show you how to update elements. Now updating an element is basically overwriting one. You're basically saying that for a specific index, you want that to point to a different piece of data. So you write A and then square brackets and then you specify the index you wanna update. So let's say I wanna replace giraffe with some other animal. I would just assign something into that slot. So let me do sloth, right? And then let me print out what is at A0 now. When I do that, I get sloth and giraffe is nowhere to be found. So if I uh, print out the count, I should still get seven, right? Because sloth replaced giraffe at slot zero. All right, so now we go to removing. So we have a couple of methods to do that as well. Uh, we have remove all. So that's going to completely remove all of the elements from the array if you just want to clear everything or you can remove a specific element. So remove at. So I could remove the first element, I could remove you know, number three or anything like that. And there are other ones like remove the first one or remove the last one and or remove the first two or three, remove the last two or three. You know, there are different, different methods suited for different purposes. So for this one, I'm going to leave it just like that as a sample. So as you can see, using an array provides 
an array of different methods, I know I'm corny, of managing your data collection. Way easier than, let's say, specifying seven different variables, right, to keep track of all of these seven different strings. You have this nice array that, you know, can be referenced by one variable, keeps track of a whole bunch of different elements, and plus has all of these fancy methods for you to manipulate and work with that data. So to tie it back to our example in the beginning of this lesson, if you had to keep track of 52 playing cards, you could specify an array called, you know, playing card deck or something like that. And you could list out your cards in an array. You just have 52 slots. And that becomes a very easy way to manage that data. So one more thing before we end off the lesson is that sometimes you might want to declare an array that is initially empty. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to write it up here, right under this declaration and call this array B. So let's say that you wanted to declare an array that would accept these strings as data elements inside the array, but initially it's going to be empty. So you start with the angle brackets, just like you do with the other declaration, but instead of putting actual elements in here, you put the data type that you expect the elements to be inside this array. And then you also put a pair of parentheses behind it to create a new array object of the string data type. So this array B now is initially empty. It contains zero elements, but it does expect string data elements inside of it. All right, in this lesson, you learned all about arrays and how they can be used to store a collection of values. You learned how to declare arrays either initially with data or as empty. You learned how to assign data into arrays. You learned how to access the data at a specific index, and you learned how to update data at a specific index. And finally, you learned how to remove data from the array. Now, I highly recommend that you download the worksheet below and practice because arrays are very, very common. Now, if you want to check out the documentation page from Apple's official Swift language guide, I'll also link to that below. All right, great progress so far. Let's move along. I'll see you in the next lesson.